we don't have anything really that's bad to say about China. It's crazy that many people just can't believe that I as a tourist had a genuinely good experience in China. Ivana and I enjoyed our trip to Shanghai so much that we've decided to continue our China series. I think overall China was amazing. Right. My name's Lee. I'm an expat living in China. I've lived here permanently for six years in the city of Shenzhen in the south of China, but I've actually spent a lot of time here over the last 20 years. And about four or five years ago, um, myself and my son, we started making videos covering China. And the reason we did that is because um, being from the West, every time we travel back to the West, we were hearing like the way people talk wasn't the way um, how things were when we were actually in China experiencing it ourselves. So we decided to start making videos about that to kind of put the record straight. But during that time, we've been attacked quite extensively, not just by um, people who have been commenting on our videos, but also Western media have been accused of being shills, have been accused of being working for the Chinese government. We've been accused of, of lying about things in China, saying that things are good. We've been, you know, the, the, the whole thing. But it's very interesting, as China's opened up after COVID, there are now more and more um, you know, people traveling to China and finding out that what they're reading in the media is not what they're experiencing here when they come to China. And I focused on three in this video. That's um, jet lag warriors, which are a Canadian couple. There's um, a, a couple called Sunkiss Bucket List, their fellow uh, people from the UK, a young couple from the UK. And then there's a German guy um, called his channels called Kent Abroad. So let's have a look at what they have to say, and I'll give my sort of comments and and things on that on that video as as they're talking. And yeah, the whole Western media versus the reality in China topic is a big one, because I can really see that many people, based on what I have read in the comment section on all my videos do have a very wrong impression of what China is really like. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I've been doing videos now for four, probably five years. And, and I can see like every video I do, we get these crazy comments that people just have a completely wrong impression of what China's like for sure. The Western media and the portrayal, let's say, of China, I guess it's not fantastic you guys you know anything that we had heard of China or our expectations were based off of what we'd heard or read through the news through the media through the online presence absolutely I mean that the, the media is always negative about China even if it's a positive story the West the media in the West will find a negative angle to, to, to put on it and it's all driven um, primarily from the US. America allocated $300 million a year for the next five years to produce negative press about China. So that's why you get so much negative press, because it's driven from a government initiative. And the media in the West are very eager to get as big a share as that $300 million a year as they can. So they will continually pump out negative news about China. If you are coming to China and you want to continue to get access to things like Google, Facebook and Instagram, you're going to need to get yourself a VPN. Now, I've used many VPNs during my time in China and I can tell you, hands down, Simple Link is the best VPN at this current time. It works on all operating systems, Windows, Mac OS, iOS and Android. They have plans that start at less than $5 per month. If you are coming to China, you need to download it before you come here. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get back to the video. It's a very, very decent and clean city and the air quality was also compared to many cities for example in Southeast Asia very very nice yeah I mean again I can concur with that I live in Shenzhen and the air quality is very good in Shenzhen now if you look at the major um, cause of pollution in cities is generally vehicles and there's a lot of electric vehicles certainly in Shenzhen 
um, you know all the taxis are electric all the buses are electric all the motorbikes are electric and i would say a good 40 percent of the cars now on the roads are electric ev is taking off incredibly fast here in china and that all you know goes towards making cleaner cities and i've been to beijing you know beijing before they had the win um uh, Olympics there was, was a lot more polluted than it is nowadays. China have done a massive job in the last 10 to 15 years of, of dealing with air pollution. They have a huge amount of green energy in solar and wind and this is all contributing to, to a, a better air quality and environment overall. And yeah, I think I talked about the air quality earlier already. So yeah, the air quality was actually really nice. Like of course, not as nice as being somewhere in the countryside. You can feel it's still a city. But yeah, once again, if I compare it to like Bangkok or Ho Chi Minh City, Manila, places like that, the air quality was actually really nice for such a big city. Well, I actually have a personal experience of Bangkok and I actually suffer with asthma. And I do struggle a bit when I'm in Bangkok because there is a lot of pollution there. There's a lot of um, diesel and petrol vehicles on the roads there. The traffic is crazy chaos. So there's a lot of pollution being kicked out in the city of Bangkok for sure. We have to say a city of 25 million people. We were so impressed with just how clean it was. Yeah, I mean, Chinese cities are very, very clean. It's not just big cities. You can go to second, third, fourth tier cities. They're just as clean. I've also, I mean, I've traveled fairly extensively over China. And you can see even a lot of smaller rural villages are very, very clean. There's a massive army of people around China, um, generally more senior people who are employed to keep the place clean. And actually, uh, my son, when he was here, he made a video about the um, street cleaners here in Shenzhen. And you want to go check that out because um, if you do, it's a great video. We've even had some comments. People were impressed that Chinese people were allowed to celebrate Christmas in public. Is Christmas banned or China has banned Christmas? And from what we saw in the time we were there in Shanghai, mm -hmm. in the city center, Christmas was very much on. Of course China haven't banned Christmas. Why so many people believe that South African guy and his little American psychic? I have no idea. They must be as foolish as anything to believe the nonsense that those two guys continuously put out. Oh, it yeah. was happening. There was decorations, there was Everywhere. music, there was markets. It was pretty festive actually. Well, yeah, I mean, to be fair, in major cities like Shanghai, Shenzhen, Beijing and that, you will get a lot more Christmassy stuff. If you go to sort of smaller cities or more rural areas, you won't see a lot of Christmas stuff. And that's because Christmas is not really a festival that's celebrated that big here in China. The big festival in China is Chinese New Year. And that's that's just around the corner. And that's kind of like, um, you know, uh, Christmas in the west but it's chinese new year here in china that, that's a big big festival there was one comment that uh, thought every people that you saw in my videos were hired by the chinese government and were placed there to leave a good impression about the country the other funny one was when people said everyone that you see in your vlogs right now are paid actors really i mean Please, pay yourself. <laughs> well, that's another one that I've had many, many times, you know, that they're all paid actors because, you know, everyone must be so oppressed and unhappy in China. I can't possibly see happy people. They must be actors. Again, it just shows how foolish those people are that are making those type of comments. One question was, did you feel under surveillance in China? Uh, no, not at all. I personally don't mind all the cameras. Once again, all these cameras make me feel safe in an area. Well, that, that's a that's a common one. You know, we often um, get comments like, oh, are you followed around? Are the Chinese government watching you all the time? Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty normal when you do videos in China. To be clear, this didn't really bother me. I'm a tourist and I'm more than okay, but the comments were very aggressive. So it is a fact that as you walk down the street in Shanghai, you will see lots and lots of cameras to be clear my intention with traveling and what i like about it is to see the way other people live their lives 
Yeah, I mean, there's, there's lots of cameras in, in every Chinese city, as there is in every other major city around the world. And I think per capita, um, I think it's London that's got more cameras than any other city in the world. Those cameras are there to keep you safe. They're there to keep an eye on bad actors within society. So overall, I think they're a good thing. Bad publicity that China gets related to is surveillance for us. We felt like it was unwarranted. Oh, it is absolutely unwarranted. You know, uh, uh, other cities in the world have just as many cameras, but they don't get the bad publicity. It's only China that gets the bad publicity. And that's because certain Western governments are pushing a particular narrative and certain Western media are, uh, amplifying that government narrative. And it's all to demonize China so the West can try to retain their hegemony. Were we being followed? Because there's cameras everywhere in Shanghai. Did we ever feel unsafe? Not to our knowledge, no. So the minute we arrived in Shanghai, when we were at the airport as well, we were recording. So but again, recording is not a problem. You're not being followed around in China. Yes, there are a lot of cameras, but as I said earlier, that's no different to any large city anywhere in the world. Cameras are there for your safety. You know, think about it logically how many people are in chinese cities do you really think the government has the resource or the desire to follow everybody around now i'm sure those cameras are used to keep an eye on uh, bad actors within society somebody is up to something that they shouldn't be or, or, or like that. But I can tell you, when I first came to China, there was a lot of petty crime, shoplifting, pickpocketing, bag snatching. That has all disappeared. You don't see any of it anymore. In the comment section, a lot of people were amazed that Ivana and I were able to walk the streets of China without a government employee with us 24 seven. Yeah, it's just crazy that people still have this thought in the year 2024 with the amount of videos that are on youtube you know just just the amount of people that have got cameras that are sharing stuff um, from china on their camera phones and people still think that if you come to china you'll be followed by government officials how ridiculous they did not feel under surveillance also some of the comments were like oh, you were followed by the Chinese government literally from the moment you arrived at the airport. Uh, there were people following you, every, following you everywhere. Um, ridiculous comments like this. Yeah, I mean, I can't believe in 2024 people still think like that, but that just shows you the power of the media in the West, you know. Also very safe. I felt very safe in Shanghai. Yeah, I mean, Shanghai is a really, really safe city, as are... Um, all the cities around China. I, I feel way safer in cities in China than I do pretty much anywhere else in the world. And that includes my home country of the UK. I've been, you know, when I was younger, you know, 18, 20 years ago, I'd be going to nightclubs in Shanghai, leaving at, you know, 2 a.m., walking and back to my apartment. Not a worry at all about being attacked or robbed or anything like that. And yeah, there's also one thing that I really want to mention. Um, I got so many negative comments about China and also many people were insulting me because I went to China. Again, um, that's par for the course. I've been doing videos, as I say, for four or five years and you can guarantee at least one or two comments on every video I put out. I will get insulting comments. Now I delete the worst ones where they're very, very insulting and personally insulting, I will delete them. But you know, it, it's quite normal that I'm called a, a, a China shill or that, you know, I've sold my soul to the Chinese government and all this kind of thing. And, and you get this, but just making videos about China. It used to bother me, it used to bother me quite a lot, uh, but it doesn't bother me anymore. I, I, I just feel sorry for the, um, people who write those kind of comments really crazy question I, I got a lot of crazy ridiculous comments as well and these comments really show what many people think about China yeah I mean I, I've been doing videos in China for about four years and I can guarantee there'll be a number of crazy comments on every video I do 
we walked down the streets with our cameras we filmed the buildings and the tourist attractions there were lots of people in the footage that we captured we even went underground into the metro filming the whole time showing the security and the trains and everything we even filmed some of the police officers because they're all around the city and we were commenting that it's very safe uh, we walked right in the front door of restaurants, cameras rolling, ate some food, had a beer. This was another thing in our comments where people were like, yeah. you need to be very careful where you're recording, you're not allowed to film everywhere. Yeah, I mean, there's absolutely no problem with, with filming in China. If you in a sensitive area, then maybe if you're like near a military base or something like that, then of course you're going to have an issue. But that's no different to anywhere else. It doesn't just apply to China and not other countries. It applies everywhere. You, you, you go and try and film in a military base in the USA or the UK. You ain't going to be allowed to, you know, simply you're not going to be allowed to in China either. I was able to film videos everywhere. You saw me even filming at the airport. Not once have I been told in China to stop filming or something like that yeah i mean in all my time here i've i've only ever been asked to stop filming once or twice and that's by overzealous security guards if you're on private property like shopping centers are private property and they may not want you filming in there but often that's been when i've got a very big professional camera if you film on your phone or with a very small camera it's never an issue and actually it's very different in china people People will actually go out of their way to get in the frame. Often I've been filming and people are behind me waving into the camera or if you point the camera at them, they will be very um, amenable. They'll want to be in the film. They'll come up and talk to you when they see you filming, asking what you're doing. They'll want to say hello on camera. And that's completely different to in the West. You know, I, I'm not comfortable filming when I'm in the, the UK at all um, but i have i'm very comfortable filming um, in china many people accused me in the comments of being paid by the chinese government there were comments like oh, i'm so disappointed ken you sold your soul to the chinese government i'm very uh, disappointed i'm going to unsubscribe your channel many comments like this and that really showed me how negative many people all these comments were from western people as far as i can judge by their names yeah, I mean, that's normally the case. I, I, I find um, most of those people making those kind of comments are from the Western world and increasingly um, Indians. I, I get a, a lot of uh, negative comments from um, people with uh, Indian names because I, I think um, India are a little bit sort of maybe jealous that China has advanced so much and, and they're still somewhat behind China. <laughs> you guys, we are still waiting for our check in the post. <laughs> wink, they wink. Have no. <laughs> no reason to pay us whatsoever because we're not the only people going there. Tourism has opened up in China, right? So, so many people head in there. So, why on earth would they pay anyone? This is something that gets leveled at me all the time. I probably get that comment at least once in every video I put out because, you know, Westerners can't possibly believe that there's nice and good things in China and positive things. So I must be lying or I must be paid to be saying that. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous that they think like this. We are very happy to report that we went, we visited, we enjoyed it so much. We had no issues throughout our entire trip. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing that, that a lot of the people who, um, will put these negative comments on your videos are generally people who've never been to China or they're people that watch channels that are these negative China channels uh, by people who've got a, a sort of agenda let's say. Overall I would say our experience of China has been an eye-opener mm. from what we've heard from people from what we've seen in news from what our friends and family back home were saying as well because everyone was a bit apprehensive based on the opinions they formed from what they've seen in the media our experience <laughs> was so different to yeah. what we heard about the country and it is so beautiful from the friendly locals to the amazing food to a very free society it is indeed a very free society you know people have the same goals and aspirations 
as any other people around the world, you know, want to better their lives, want better jobs, want nicer houses, want nicer cars, want to go out and enjoy themselves, want to do sport and recreation, want to go shopping. And it's no different to anywhere else in the world. So all I'm saying, all of my answers are only based on what I have experienced in just six days and only in Shanghai. But I haven't seen a single homeless person. I haven't seen poverty. And also there wasn't much pollution. The city is super clean. There is no trash. I mean, pretty much all of Chinese cities are clean and a lot of the rural areas too. I mean, of course, if you look hard enough, you can find sort of more untidy areas and dirtier areas, but that's no different to any other city in the world. Ivana and I sort of learned over our years of travel that typically the rumors you hear are exaggerated. Yeah, I mean, the rumors are very exaggerated. That just shows you the power of, of, of the media. Um, and it's nice to see um, people like these guys now coming to China and actually seeing what it's really, really like. Something that I've been saying for many, many years in my videos. And I always get pushed back because, um, you know, because of COVID, not many people being able to travel here. But now COVID's over, China's opening up, it's much more easy to get visas. There are a lot more people coming here. And I hope that's a, gonna be a positive thing that more and more people will actually start pushing back against this Western media narrative. Crazy that many people just can't believe that I as a tourist had a genuinely good experience in China. That it is, it is crazy. I mean, I, you know, I've, I've lived here for, for sort of six years permanently and still after all that time, people are watching hundreds of videos. People still can't believe I live a very nice, comfortable life here in China. And I think the bottom line is if you, if you stick within the law and you stick to the rules, then you will have no problem here. If you start breaking the law and breaking the rules, then of course you will have a problem here. But that's no different to like anywhere else in the world. You know, you have to abide by the laws and abide by the rules. Everything will be fine. So there you go. That gives you um, a feeling of what other YouTubers think about China. I will leave links to their channels um, in the uh, description section of, of the video so you can go check them out. I really encourage you to watch some of their videos on China because a lot of their videos are very similar to, to, to the videos I produced when I first arrived here, how shocked I was at how, how you know, China really is. And it, it's good that more and more people are coming. It's much, much easier to get a visa now. It's not even that difficult to, to, to get a regular tourist visa. But if you don't want to do that, you can get the on arrival, the 144 hour transit visa that is limited to certain cities and provinces. Or there's a number of countries now, I think there's seven or eight countries where you can actually get a 15 day visa pretty easily. You'll have to check out the list of what countries that is. I don't have them off my head. But yeah, I mean, so I, I, I thank you for the time in watching this video today. It is a bit of a longer one than normal. If you do like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you like the content I do on this channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. However, as always, for now, take care.